Hello, ladies and gentlemen. There's a recipe for spatzel or spetsley. Forgive my pronunciation. I think you'll love this recipe, though. So, sticking with spatzel, and uh, to all the German viewers of this video, please forgive me. I'm sure you will. You're very nice people. Right, here we go. So, it's so easy. Dry ingredients. Flour, parsley, pepper, into a bowl with the flour. I think I said that already. Give that a little whisk together to incorporate it all evenly. And then we can get the wet ingredients in. So, two eggs. And the water. Now what I do with the whisk there in the middle, like a well, try to create a slurry. But then obviously it's going to be a bit hard on the whisk to try to mix the whole thing. So you've done your job, whisk. Thank you very much. Over to a more sturdy wooden spoon. Beat that into a smooth batter. A thick batter. That is about right. But what I want to do, I want to rest it for a while to let the all the wet ingredients completely incorporate into the dry ingredients so we'll really know how thick our mixture is and for me a little bit thick I want it to fall off the spoon a tad faster so this is where you're cooking now guys you know you use your senses that's about a tablespoon more of cold water and it's not really a right or wrong way um, you'll find out when you put it through the holes of the I'm using a colander but you can buy a specialist spatzel maker that you want it to drop through the holes so the water is a good inch or so below the bottom of the colander because it needs to be able to drop into it and it creates these sort of elongated rustic odd looking shape sort of almost maggot or worm like you know sorry to use that analogy but it describes how they look really so i'm using the back of a big spoon to push this through the thinner the batter the easier it's going to fall through so you know bear that in mind I'm not going to get it all done in one batch, so quickly bore that up, I speed it up and then it's going to go into the pan next to it which is going to have some butter in it. I have since tried this, doing two batches, where instead of going straight into the pan with the butter, because that's the traditional way, I just put it into a bowl, drizzled it with some olive oil, then did the next batch of spatzel. So it was all sort of cooked to the same point and then cooked it all in the pan. I didn't notice any difference, but the purists out there may get upset. Don't want to upset them. So I'm doing it the traditional way. Scoop it out with a, that's called a spider. Very useful device to have in your kitchen. Not too expensive, I promise you. From your local shop. So I'll put the heat on really low at the back while I'm doing that, while I quickly, hurry up, chop, chop, get this next batch through and that'll be it. Makes a total mess of your colander, so uh, good luck cleaning that up later on. Try to get all those bits there. I'm sure there's some more batter I could have got through, but I was like, no, quickly, hurry up. That's it, give that quick boil, just, just really a minute maybe on a rapid boil so it's definitely cook through and then into the other pan now that's where you can get creative at this stage you know this is where you can put other flavors I recently made a pork schnitzel video and of course you say well we know we watch all of your videos Uncle Matt but for those that are new here I made a pork schnitzel and I thought I just want to do some like sort of like toasty slightly crispy spatzel to go below it because it's like a crispy schnitzel and I thought that would be really nice so I'm cooking this on and I would say I probably cooked that a little bit too far. As you can hear there, that's very crispy. Absolutely delicious. And I did serve this with a very healthy butter sauce. Oh, that's that schnitzel, bringing back memories. Oh, that was lovely. And there's the butter sauce, so that was a nice healthy dish. But I'm thinking to myself, no, I can do better. That's what, um, that's what binging with babiche, oh, sorry, get my teeth in. Binging with babiche would say, we can do better. So a few other ingredients, I was it was keeping me up at night. So I quickly made another half batch of this uh, spatzel 
one egg, 100 grams of flour, etc. And I thought, no, let's do this again. So I fried off a bit of bacon. Then I added some onion to it. And then I put my another batch of this spatzle in there. And I hope you'll agree, this is a much better dish. So give that a stir around for a little while. I didn't even put any butter in this one, but feel free to. So happy with it, it's all done. The spatzel is not as toasty as it was last time. So let's finish this off. A handful of herbs. That's Parmesan cheese. And tons and tons of black pepper. I edited that. I was twisting away for quite a while there. All right, it's a bit sticky on the bottom. So what you do is you reserve the water that you cook the spatula in. This is a trick that the Italians use when doing pasta dishes. So that is probably about another 50 mil of the water. But I say, you know, let it, if it's too much, just let it cook and evaporate a little bit. But what it, I wanted to do was to create a little coating of sauce for this. I wanted this to be moist and it was moist. I was very happy with that. And that's one of those times when you think, no, when something's worth doing, do it properly. So I went back and we'll finish this off, obviously, with some more pepper and cheese and parsley. And that is basically it. The hardest thing of doing this is washing up the colander afterwards. So thank you for watching Uncle Max Cookery Lessons. I really hope you enjoy it. Please don't forget while you're here to subscribe if you're new. Give us a thumbs up, ask me some questions. I might not be able to answer them, but you know, I'll give it a go anyway. Interact with me. I'm quite nice, really. And I'll see you in the next video soon. And if you're ever wondering why Germans eat this, it's because they need a lot of energy. They need a lot of energy for their doing that. Anyway, bye.